These are the Oyamel fir forests of central Mexico. Their boughs are heavy with millions of monarch butterflies. They take to the skies in the millions. Any number of potential prey could venture past. Velvet isn't picky. She'll eat anything from rodents and birds to small antelope and monkeys. Slight miscalculation makes no difference. Once she's set her sights on a target, there's no chance for escape. Her strike isn't the fastest in the snake world, but at over 20 feet per second, it does the job. The shock of the attack stuns the bird, while the complex venom cocktail rapidly floods its body. As she waits for her prey to die, Velvet adjusts her fangs. They can really get in the way sometimes. Within 10 minutes, it's all over and lunch is ready. Eating is a specialized process. Velvet unhinges her jaw to allow her to open her mouth wide enough. Using rows of teeth to latch on, she drags her prey to a safe place where she can eat in peace. As spring warms the water along Mexico's west coast, the shift in temperature sparks a plankton bloom. This upwelling of plankton attracts millions of pelagic red crabs to the surface, turning the waters off Baja red. The bottom-dwelling crabs rise from the depths to feed, and some believe to mate. But like the plankton they feed on, they're slaves to the current. The bite-sized crustaceans become easy pickings, for migrating seals and whales. Swarms of crabs clump together. As different groups merge, they create a slick up to three miles long. So dense, it blocks out the light. The rising plankton draws another wave of hungry migrants in from the Pacific. thousands of giant eagle rays. They school together, forming vast shoals across the Sea of Cortez. White wings, taller than a man, beat in a collective dance. But some want to stand out from the crowd. Despite weighing more than a ton, both males and females can launch six feet out of the water. It's all about getting noticed.
And for those who do, there's a better chance of leaving with a mate. As the intense solar radiation evaporates the water, mineral salts are left behind. The lake's vivid color is caused by microscopic algae that thrive in its caustic waters. The algae lure thousands of flamingos. Three different species come here to feed and breed. The James flamingo, the Andean flamingo, and the Chilean flamingo. Each species has a slightly different strategy for finding food. But they all use their beaks to sieve algae and other microorganisms from the water. One of the algae produces a reddish pigment that not only turns the water pink, but also anything that eats the algae, including the brine shrimp and the flamingos themselves. At the beginning of the dry season, Male and female James's flamingos begin their courtship dance. The display normally takes place around noon and may last for a couple of hours. the birds, the more elaborate and synchronized the dance. Nearly three months have passed since Nagaina mated with the village male. It's now the end of May, and she'll soon be ready to lay. Most species of snake seek out a cavity or an abandoned burrow in which to lay their eggs. But not Nagaina. King cobras are the only snakes that build a nest. It's a unique skill that allows Nagaina to select the perfect spot to give her young the greatest chance of survival. On a slope near the base of a tree, her nest is shaded from the hot sun. But more importantly, it won't get waterlogged by the monsoon rain. She's been hard at work for more than a week now. Coiling her body, she steadily amasses fallen leaves and twigs, drawing them together into a pile. It's a delicate process that could take a couple of weeks to complete. The rustling leaves attract attention. A rat snake, 
on the lookout for rodents rummaging in the undergrowth. Approaching the lair of a snake killer is a dangerous mistake. But with an abdomen full of eggs, Nagaina has zero appetite. She has only one thing on her mind. At last, the nest is ready. More than a foot high and three feet wide, it's a masterpiece of engineering. Inside, Nagaina creates a small chamber in which she lays a clutch of up to 40 eggs. Once covered with more leaves, the chamber will stay at an almost constant 80 degrees and 90% humidity for the next three months. Her work complete, Nagaina stands guard, a queen on her throne. She won't budge until her babies are ready to hatch. The mongoose and wild boar that roam this forest would love to feast on her eggs. But they'd be foolish to try. Nothing is going to challenge this mother when it comes to her babies. Mantis shrimps have earned themselves a reputation for being somewhat ill-tempered. But scientists have discovered that there's another side to these macho males. This young hopeful is trying to catch the eye of a potential mate. He starts by showing off his paddle-like antennae. His technique may not be very impressive to us, but he is in fact sending the female secret signals. And that is possible because mantis shrimps can see and reflect a kind of light that absolutely no other creature in the world that we know of can see. The male's display is a private invitation for this female to dance. So far, so good. She makes her way to the dance floor. If the male can impress the female with his performance, she will choose him to father her offspring. It seems that this male has all the right moves. The final phase of courtship, however, usually takes place out of sight, within their burrows. A few thousand feet up, spring comes later to the high elevation plains of Wyoming. Snow here can stick around well into April. The ground, just emerged from winter's cover, remains drab and brown. But as temperatures rise, the action heats up on the grasslands. It's time for prairie fowl to throw their spring dances to compete for mates. The male greater prairie chickens kick off the event with eye-catching, throat-popping moves. They force air through orange sacs on their necks. The booming sound will draw females from over a mile away. The sharp-tailed grouse are next to get their groove on. Rapid-fire tail rattles and fancy footwork help impress the females.
The most flamboyant display comes from the greater sage grouse. This male needs to get something off his chest. When inflated, his two large sacks do most of the dancing for him. It's a spectacle of sight and sound that only a female grouse finds hard to resist. Mating season. To fly in this extraordinary way, hummingbirds have changed the structure of their wings and the way they beat them. Here in Ecuador, scientist Doug Altshuler is working to analyze exactly how they do so. Hummingbirds are remarkable animals. They have extreme adaptations in physiology and anatomy. And they also have a very unique behavior. They can hover. And the approach that we've taken is to study how those physiological and anatomical adaptations determine their hovering ability. Using high-speed cameras, he records the mechanics of their flight in minute detail. He can slow down the action by around 40 times and so observe exactly what's taking place. Most birds flap their wings up and down, but hummingbirds flap theirs more like insects. They twist their wings around between strokes and so can generate lift when flapping both forwards and backwards. Doing this at high speed puts a huge strain on their wings. So, to withstand it, the wings have a special structure. The hummingbird wing is very stiff and undergoes few changes in shape as it rapidly beats back and forth. They owe this stiffness to a modification of the bones. The arm bones have shrunk but the bones of the hand have elongated and support most of the wing surface. Twisting this wing at the shoulder and at the wrist produces the hummingbird's distinctive wing beat. Marula leaves are sought after foliage in the Manuletti Nature Reserve. The elephant picks just a few branches, but an army of caterpillars can destroy an entire canopy. The lunar moth caterpillar only has one purpose in its six week long life, to eat as much as possible and to build a silk cocoon for hibernation and metamorphosis. In a month and a half, it supersizes from a pinhead at birth to a fat four inch long worm. On the last day, it stops to feed finds the perfect branch, and lit by the moon, it spins a delicate silk cocoon. The caterpillar labors all night, instinctively knowing how to build the perfect chamber, which it will occupy through winter.
By morning, it gives the cocoon the finishing touches and closes the door that in spring will reveal a miracle of nature. During the winter months to come, the caterpillar will slowly transform into a beautiful moth, one of nature's most startling metamorphoses. Polar bears have good eyes. Like humans, they can see in color. So for them too, the summertime tundra is a visual feast. They leisurely stroll about. While all around them, animals scurry busily to make use of the short Arctic summer. But mostly, they indulge in the luxury of not being forced to do much at all. Most healthy adult males arrive on land fattened up for the long haul. Individuals like the bruiser can survive without eating until the ice returns. For skinny bears and many families though, they'll need to find at least some nourishment to survive the summer. But for now, and for him, it's good to be the bruiser. These are the Oyamel fir forests of central Mexico. This unique alpine habitat is a relic from a time when the earth was cooler and wetter. Now, only 2% of the original fir trees remain. Their boughs are heavy, but not with leaves, with millions of monarch butterflies. These individuals belong to a super generation, survivors of an incredible 3,000 mile journey that began in Canada and the Northern United States. They arrived five months ago and have remained motionless through the winter in a state of dormancy. Like a hibernating bear, they require the warmth of spring to awaken. As the sun's first rays strike, there's no time to waste. They take to the skies in the millions, all synchronized to find a mate. For the females, there's no shortage of options. But for a male monarch in Mexico, finding a partner means the ultimate sacrifice. Whether the males succeed or not, it's their last week on Earth. This is a male, easily identified by the two black spots on his wings. He needs to mate, and soon. His luck is in. A female. And she's alone. He whisks her away from the surrounding chaos, then injects her with sperm. He also donates a cocktail of nutrients to assist her in pregnancy and her long journey ahead. He loses up to one third of his body weight in the process. An overzealous male can overdo it and cause a female to explode. 
not this time. Now carrying hundreds of fertilized eggs, this female and millions of others like her must embark on the second leg of their epic migration. They'll fly 900 miles back north, through Mexico and into the United States. There, they'll find food and a safe place to lay their eggs, which will give rise to the next generation to continue the journey north. As for the male, his journey ends here. His mate has literally sucked the life out of him. But his great-great-grandchildren will be the next super generation. The ones strong enough to fly 3,000 miles back to these ancient fir trees of Michoacan.